This episode of Out of Spec Reviews is brought to you by Magna. More on that later. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You guys know we don't just review cars on this channel, we talk a lot about infrastructure, especially when it comes to electric cars. But one thing we've never discussed before is how to fuel up one of those that is a Toyota Mirai, a hydrogen vehicle, and I am going to use a hydrogen fueling station for the first time. Now that is a hydrogen dispenser. There's another one. There's a previous generation Mirai pulling up. Perhaps uh, they want to talk about their experience. I don't know. But this is the whole system. I'm going to explain what I know about hydrogen fueling stations, which is minimal. I'm going to use a station for the first time, and that'll be that. So interesting. <laughs> So this looks to be all of the hydrogen stuff. So let's take a look. It says watch step. It says all of this information on there. March 2021. This is a full unit, 225 amps maximum. So I wonder if this is an electrolyzer or if it's just a filling station that holds tanks. My understanding is there are two types of hydrogen stations. The first would be a station that has tanks delivered to it that are refueled and typically those are produced by natural gas and I would say the dirty way to make hydrogen, uh, not the cleanest. And you can see this is a true zero dispenser station is what they're called. Interesting. So that's the first. Essentially you have a natural gas byproduct creating hydrogen which is then transported to a station with the full tanks dropped off, the empty tanks picked up or it does a transfer and these are stored typically at lower pressures somewhere over here. And so you can see these giant tubes in the middle that are storing the sort of low or medium pressure hydrogen. From there, oh, and then the second station would be sort of an electrolyzer. That's actually what's going in at our office in Colorado, uh, which will be awesome. So we'll have a fueling station and essentially um, we'll be able to generate hydrogen from water, which is kind of cool. And you can do this with electricity, which can be generated hopefully from sustainable sources of electricity like wind, solar, and hydro, and then that stores hydrogen. My conundrum, and along with all of you, is that's a lot of effort round trip where you could just put electricity straight into a car. But also battery packs have a lot of natural resources and they're heavy and uh, you know they, they require a lot of cost and weight to the vehicle where hydrogen doesn't have all of those things. So there's trade-offs. The biggest downside to hydrogen is you have to come to a station like this and you can't just plug it in the wall at home and you can't plug it in anywhere. And, and we'll talk a little bit about station availability in a little bit, but essentially an EV today is easier to own and live with than a hydrogen car. But at one point in the past, EVs were hard to live with as well. And um, we just spoke to this Mariah owner. He didn't want to be on camera, but he said he loves it. He just drives up, plugs in, charges, and drives away, and it's super simple and easy. I'm not sure what type of station this is, whether it's a electrolyzer or storage station. My guess is it's a refilled one. Um, I can hear it actually pumping out into his car, which is very interesting. So without further ado, let's go over to the pump. Let's plug it in. Here comes another Mirai, actually, which is very interesting. And um, let's get our car filled up, and then we'll talk about availability and sort of the feasibility for long trips. You join me back at the office with these incredible views to thank Magna. Now, Magna is a technology company that produces not only parts for cars, but also technological solutions from manufacturing and design and engineering. They cover so many parts of the automotive sector, and I bet you've interacted with a Magna product in your life before. Magna actually is very near and dear to my heart because their partnership, Magna Steyr in Austria, produced my first car, a Mini Countryman, and uh, it was built right there in Graz. A lot of you are also familiar, Magna is going to be producing the Fisker Ocean in their Magna Steyr factory, and they also build G-Wagons, and nothing gets tougher than a G. So really excited about our partnership with Magna, of course. They are also hiring for engineers, so we know a lot of you guys are super interested in technology and auto Automotive. I'll leave a link below so you can learn more about possible opportunities at Magna. But of course, we want to thank them for sponsoring today's video and being such a huge supporter of Out of Spec. Truly, they are pushing mobility forwards responsibly and sustainably. Join me over here at the fuel pump, so come take a look. First of all, this is a true zero one. I assume there's different 
manufacturers or charging station providers, filling station providers, similar to gas stations. We're at a Chevron filling station. So I'm gonna take my card, insert the card. Now what's interesting, it says do not remove card and also remove card at the same time. Uh, what's interesting is there are two different hydrogen ones. Receipt, yes, we do want that. I'd like to see what that says. I hear hydrogen's really expensive and the Mirai gets $15,000 for free so it's, so far it's very similar to a fueling station experience now this is where the hydrogen gets dispensed into the car so I'm gonna pull this out look at that that looks pretty freaking wild in there doesn't it yeah and there's uh, some communications it says press grade to begin this one's flashing if you take a look over here mm -hmm. and that one's not so we're gonna select this one. Ooh, this just pressurized somehow Okay, fueling in progress. So I assume I'm going to center this on there. Okay, whoa, it's on. Not very tight though. Do I, oh, hissing. Things are happening. So this is gonna get really cold. My understanding is in a warmer temperatures, like now it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It in theory um, will renew, remove my, Wait, why does it say replace nozzle? Maybe because I pulled it out for a second and it might take up to 30 seconds, right, to release. Oh, now we're locked on. So you need to let that happen. Remove nozzle and return to dispenser, okay. So let's redo this process. I'm getting there. I feel like everyone using an EV charger for the first time. All right, couple of things that I've already noticed. This gets super pressurized. See these tubes right here? Wild. Um, it's crazy. And connect vehicle to nozzle. Oh, connect nozzle to vehicle. Maybe I don't need to repay for everything. I can already feel this is really cold to the touch. In, oh nice. Now it's locked in. Press grade to begin, H70. Oh, things are happening. Hissing, oh, and we're dumping fuel in hydrogen. Now it's common for it to stop and start again because it's basically um, checking to make sure if there are any leaks or anything like that is my understanding. So this is all normal that it goes and stops and goes and stops. And here's how much money we're putting in. Take a look here, you can hear all this noise. And it's just going basically pumping minus 40 degrees Celsius, high pressure hydrogen into this thing. This is fascinating. Now the Mirai has three individual tanks, all that can handle um, 700 or 70 megapascals, which is about 10,000 PSI. So I'm kind of like, let's just back away from this thing a little bit. I don't know, like what, what's, they say it's not dangerous at all, so that's good. Just feels like scary for the first time, like a charging an EV would be. And take a look at this. We've already put in $10 worth of H70. Just feel this really quick. So this is warm, that's cold-ish. No, this is cold in here. You can definitely tell it's colder than ambient. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going. Now in theory, this should take about five minutes to fill from dead using an H70 pump. And um, yeah, we are, we're just below half is where we are. So I'm gonna let it go all the way to full. What a super easy process. You just credit card in, dunk, H70 and go. Finding the station was probably the most annoying bit of this. Wouldn't you agree, Alyssa? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just going. It's 13.14 price per kilogram. I don't know if that's 13. I think that's $13 and 14 cents per kilogram. And I don't know what the average going rate is, to be honest, but I assume it changes from time to time but we're $20 in and we've added 1.6 kilograms so far. I don't actually know how many kilograms the Mirai can hold, but it's hissing, it's making weird noises. <laughs> um, now what's interesting is, if you take a look over here, this is the hydrogen stuff, right? So you can see all that over there. Uh, in theory, even though we're putting in H70, there needs to be stages to get up to max. So you can't just dump in, uh, 10,000 PSI and into an empty tank. You have to go like 
you can only go in differences of 200 bar. So this has multiple stages to eventually bring it up to the full 10,000 PSI of hydrogen, which is very interesting. So now it's stopped. We put in $27 worth, two kilograms. I'm unsure. Nope, still going. It's just checking and everything. What's interesting is this uses the uh, J something standard. I'll put the standard boop right here. And essentially this is a standard that allows the car and the handle to communicate with each other if there's any issues. And my understanding, it uses some sort of infrared communication within the handle. It's really interesting. Yeah, no cell phone usage, no smoking. What do, I mean, that I guess makes sense. What does this say? Swipe oh, card, lift nozzle, connect the nozzle, press H70, pull straight back on the sleeve to connect and put the nozzle, I mean, that's a pretty simple process. So we'll let this fill up. I'll let you know how much it costs for a half a tank and then um, first time ever using a hydrogen station. So this flashed L for a half a second and now it says replace nozzle and return to the dispenser. We put in $41 for a half a tank little bit over so it's about 80 bucks to fully charge they say here true zero charging I would say this is true zero filling but I wouldn't call this charging okay handle chilly this really chilly uh, it says remove nozzle and return to dispenser so I need to it might be frozen actually oh look at this frost on the nozzle right there that is super cool. Don't you don't want to touch this because you'll get frostbite. Wow, it's like frozen. You can't bend it at all like you could just a minute ago. Literally, the whole thing is chilly, a little rattly, and like won't bend. Look at this. <laughs> Feels like charging stations in the middle of winter. So I guess I'll put this in here, lock it in, and that's officially gone away. Now I can put the dust cap, take a look here, back on the nozzle. Why is this so fascinating? I don't know, but it is. And in theory, we should be full. Let's check the car. Pretty sweet, 42 bucks. So, car on, and let's take a look at the fuel level. It'll show up here somewhere. Mirai, ooh, things flying across the screen. And, oh, full tank. Take a look at that. 260 miles. The thing's rated for about 320, but I've been ripping on it. So there we go. That is Wonderful, let me just drive away. That was super easy. A little bit of a weird situation though, but I gotta say, I'm really honestly impressed with how simple that is, how nice and quick. I mean, look, charging an EV at home is certainly more convenient than whatever this just was. But for a lot of people, they can't charge at home. And if you can't charge at home and you don't really go on road trips, then why not just fill up with hydrogen? I don't know, am I a proponent for hydrogen? I think only for medium and heavy duty stuff, but it is very convenient. Oh, my receipt's over there, I'm gonna go grab that. So in terms of infrastructure, just a few years ago, there was only like nine, eight or nine hydrogen stations across California. And very recently, look, another Mirai just rolled up and there's now a Clarity hydrogen waiting to plug in. It's a full station. We were the only ones and now there's a full with a waiting line. But with these things only filling in five minutes or so, then you're good. So maybe we got lucky, I don't know. One of the problems with this is these stations can actually run out of hydrogen because they have to be trucked in. And I have this map that's called the California Fuel Cell Partnership website, cafcp.org and it will show you all of the fuel cell stations. So can you see all those there? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we are, you can see red means they're out. I don't know what the other ones mean. Yellow means they're almost out. And there's a few green ones around, specifically at the one we are at, which I'm pretty sure is this one here. True Zero Baldwin Park. I think that's the one we're at, yes. And essentially you can see H70 online, H70 inventory, 590 kilograms less than when we navigated here, which makes sense. I don't know why it says 100%, but I don't know, it says renewable hydrogen. Not sure what that's all about. And uh, basically liquid, and then it's open 24 seven. Maybe this isn't the one we're at, Alyssa. We're at the one with Baldwin Park. We are? Mm-hmm. You sure? I think so. Diamond Bar? No. no, not that one. 
Okay, it doesn't matter actually, because it, we're already here and we're filled up. But essentially you use this, you find your station where you need to go. Now we're taking a road trip. Take a look at our out of spec motoring channel. It won't go up for a little while, all the way down to San Diego. And I'm thinking we may stop here and fill up on the way back. We'll see, uh, but we have options, which is really nice. But thankfully we're filled up and we're good to go. So the infrastructure seems to be the problem, just like it is with electric cars. The car is great. Watch my Mirai reviews. This thing's awesome. Uh, it all comes down to can the infrastructure support the car? And the answer is outside of California, no. There's no stations outside of California, my understanding. Maybe one or two across the country, but nothing that you could rely on. You would have to live here in California to own one of these. And seemingly it's working. And we, again, met a Mirai owner who's been very pleased and has no issues. I've also heard horror stories where if you try and go up to San Francisco and one station's out, you gotta spend the night, wait for the fuel truck to come up and go. So it's an interesting technology. And um, I have to say that was a pretty painless experience filling up though. A lot of pressure, a lot of cold temperatures. It feels weird, but again, when you charge an electric car at 300 kilowatts, that's a lot of energy going through that plug. It's all fun and interesting to me. I kind of like it. Anyway, off to San Diego. Take a look at our out of spec motoring channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for fueling with us. What did you think about that experience? What do you think about hydrogen in general? I know there's a lot of people who don't like it purely for the reason that you can't charge at home and also the round trip efficiency that I mentioned. And let me know if you want to see more on hydrogen fueling stations. Perhaps we could reach out to True Zero and they could show us inside of this unit right over here and how everything works and why they need this um, sort of uh, pressure relief that goes up and vents to the atmosphere. It's all, it's all new to me, but I'm not disliking it so much. It's pretty neat. Let's go. Just a quick note uh, to add a little bit more context to the hydrogen comp applications. Uh, if you use H35, that's 35 megapascals or about 5,000 PSI, that will only fill the tank halfway, like I mentioned. Uh, what we noticed was on this new station that we went to, that's a fresh install, uh, pretty much only had H70, 70 pascal, megapascals, which is about 10,100 and something PSI. Uh, and that can do a full charge on this. Uh, the thing is, when you're when the tank is filling the car, I think it's coming in kind of waves and bursts, and so the tank maximum in the Mirai should be able to handle about eight or nine hundred megapascals. Nice Polestar too on on lowered actually. It looks pretty good. Might be a performance one on just different wheels. It looks great. Um, and so essentially the tanks are rated for a peak pressure higher than what a full uh, charge, full capacity would be. How, I don't really know the, the phrasing. Do we call them fueling stations or charging stations? It said charging station on the thing. I think it's a hydrogen fueling station. You tell me. Uh, so that's one issue. The second thing is it has to get really cold. So it gets down to minus 40 degrees C. So essentially what happens is the hydrogen stored at, at medium pressure in those big tubes, then it goes into a compressor, a refrigerant, uh, a, or some sort of cooling process, and then goes into the car. And hydrogen is one of the only gases, along with helium, that actually heats up as it expands. Once there's more room, it gains heat. And so um, it, it's super unique in that sense. So actually, the reason you have to get it so cold is that when you're filling the tanks, you you don't want it to get too warm. The tanks have a maximum temperature limit of 80 degrees Celsius. And so my understanding is you may have to like wait for a cool down period, occasionally under rare circumstances. The other issue with hydrogen stations, especially those, well, I would say it probably is for those with an electrolyzer on site or those that have to be trucked in in terms of tubes, uh, is essentially they, they can run out of pressure. And so they may have hydrogen stored. So one issue is like we mentioned, they might be out of hydrogen and they gotta wait for a refill. The second issue, they might be out of compressed hydrogen and you have to wait 15, 20, 25 minutes to recompress the hydrogen to fill up the car, recompress it back up to, to uh, 70 megapascals or 10,000 PSI. Uh, and that seems to be more of an issue on the older stations, although I'm sure it's the same on the current new ones. Uh, nice new e-tron too going by. So there's a lot of issues here, but let's not forget, there's a lot of weird intricacies with EV charging as well. And I'm not certainly here to be a hydrogen guy. I just think to me, 
interesting new technologies are interesting. I'm not an EV guy. I'm not a combustion guy. I'm not a hydrogen guy. I like anything with wheels. You guys know I love manual transmission, combustion cars with lots of noise and big turbos and stuff. Um, I, I'm just fascinated by engines and propulsion and movement. And, you know, hydrogen's another thing for me to learn. When cars run on unicorn farts one day, I'll be into that. So the thing with hydrogen is there are intricacies. Electric vehicles charging have intricacies. They have 350 kilowatt stations versus 150 kilowatt. There are some 350 kilowatt stations that are capped at 350 amps. So it's all, yeah, we're exiting right here. It's all got weird stuff back and forth. The biggest hurdle to the hydrogen filling station seemingly to me is the infrastructure problem. And actually I think it's the same problem with EVs as well. And so essentially the round trip efficiency of your electricity seemingly no matter which way you put it is less with hydrogen um, however i think that this fueling process the hydrogen uh, speed is really useful not so much maybe in the passenger car space but in the medium and heavy duty space i think hydrogen is here to stay it's a piece of the puzzle maybe not so much for passenger cars but certainly for big trucks that a you know need big range without big weight because they have to tow big weight uh, and two need quick refilling times. There's there's applications here throughout. I, I just don't wanna be the guy that says, hydrogen, silly, I'm not interested. I see issues, I see issues with electric cars, but I'm fascinated by this issue, uh, by, by all of these issues to, to try and decarbonize our transportation at least as much as possible. Save the fun stuff for later, but then we'll have e-fuels, which is another thing I wanna get into. I, I love it all. I think it's cool. I really enjoyed using the hydrogen station today. Um, certainly a, a bucket list item. I feel like I'm late to the party. I should have done this five years ago. Um, and, I, and I'm glad I'm just now starting to learn about it because I got a lot to learn. And I can't wait to take you guys along for the process. You know, basically we're here to just, uh, you know, share our findings, share our facts, not necessarily say that this is the answer. But if people think that it is, we should at least try and understand this technology a little bit better before I just say this is dumb like I have been. Anyway, thanks for watching.